You know, Rob, it's Friday. That means a brand new episode of The Mandalorian has indeed launched. Yeah. And now, as we normally do on Fridays here, Rob and I are going to talk about Mandalorian. We're not going to go into heavy plot spoilers or anything like that. Uh, Ann and I will do a spoiler review a little bit later this afternoon. You guys can probably, I think it's going to be at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. You guys can come back and join us for that. Uh, but the episode, this one directed by Bryce Dallas Howard, who, of course, directed one of my favorite episodes from last season, the one on the on the Marsh world where they help the local community against the uh, the people who had the imperial walker those creatures that had the imperial walker i really like that episode and i really 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 enjoyed this episode one very cool thing for me was seeing um was seeing titus welliver is that how you pronounce yeah. his last name yep. he plays bosch yep. and he's also yep. in sons of anarchy and he's just in everything it was very very cool seeing him uh, pop up in there as well and of course the name of this episode was the heiress the heiress and as soon as they tell you that the name of this episode is the heiress well you know what that means <laughs> because we've all been expecting it as soon as they call it the heiress you know we're going to get Bo-Katan and of course Bo-Katan uh, pops up there played by Katie Sackhoff from Battlestar Galactica she's in there too and we saw you know uh, Sasha Banks, Sasha Banks, who I told people a while ago on Twitter that she's actually not playing Sabine Wren. I told people on Twitter and, and a bunch of people called me a liar. But anyway, she's she's not playing Sabine Wren. So there's that. Uh, this was a immediate follow up as they've normally done in these episodes to last week's episode. It picks right up where the last one left off. And uh, Rob, this was a lot of fun. This was a really fun, great, enjoyable episode to watch. I had a blast. They tied in a number of things together uh, already. I thought it was great, just as we expected. We saw we got to meet Frog Lady's husband, which I thought was cool. Anyway, Rob, your thoughts and your impressions of this week's episode of The Mandalorian. Well, you know, I've decided to start rating Mandalorian episodes uh, not on a on a scale of how much necessarily I like them, but how much the Hot Toys figures are going to cost me eventually. <laughs> and this 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 uh, episode gets three uh, a rating of three because they're going to make Bo Katan and <laughs> her compatriots. So that's seven hundred and fifty bucks right there. <laughs> so that's how much this episode of Mandalorian is will cost me will be seven hundred and fifty dollars. But I love this episode. First of all, I really like the world building. We finally saw a milieu that we've never really seen in a Star Wars movie before. I mean, we saw Camino, where we, which is a water world, but this, I liked seeing sort of an industrial, a port town, you know, a port city. And I, I thought that was great. The visual effects, well, I don't know if they still use stagecraft technology, but the visual effects when they were out at sea were amazing. I mean, maybe they did go out to sea and shoot it on the water. I don't know, but man, it was, I loved it. I, I, I loved seeing, you know, the, I love the fact that what this show is giving me is basically my classic Kenner action figure collection. They're, they're moving through all of the different species that we ever saw, you know, like everybody that was on Jabba's sail barge. <laughs> It's being represented at some point in this. And, and and that's the kind of fan service that I really like. And I, I look, I there were things in it. I actually laughed out loud when the Razor Crest fell in the water. Now, you know me, I can't stand the abuse starships take. But <laughs> I thought it was just funny, you know, and, and uh, that's not really a spoiler. But it was just, I mean, the poor ship, it just gets beat to hell but i really just like the the representation of the star wars universe like you said titus welliver i like the ship designs we saw some things that we had never seen before and i i just love seeing all the different races it just felt like star wars and the 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 callbacks to the clone wars and rebels and everything that's going on i mean clearly these people between filoni and favreau favreau wrote this episode again Bryce Dallas Howard directed it. And I, dude, I just, I had such a good time with this episode. A couple of neat things. You're talking about the world. Even today, still, a lot of times, you know, you mentioned Camino. In Star Wars, it's a running joke. Every planet has one environment. 
it is either a desert world or an all water world or an all ice planet world. It was really neat as they were approaching this world. Oh, look, it's a world with actual multiple environments around it. You can see, which I, but here's the interesting thing though. This really, if you just look at the bones, this episode is the exact same as last week's episode. We have Mando showing up on a world, tracking down a lead. He meets somebody who may have be able to point them towards another important step, but in order to get that person's help and get the direction he needs to get to that next step, they need him to do something for them. So he does something for them, and then it ends with that person now giving him the direction he needs to take and go. That's the exact same outline as last week's episode, but this is why it works for me. Again, I've been saying this for a while. The great thing to me about Mandalorian is that the journey is the story. You know, it reminds me like of the old Kung Fu show. Remember that, Kung Fu? Yeah, or like or, something like Have Gun Will Travel. Or, yes, or Go, you know, something like that. Yeah, where the journey itself is the adventure. The journey itself is the story. And I thought it was great. There's a lot of very, very cool elements in there. And again, i very impressed with Bryce Dallas Howard because this was a very, it, it just, it was a different kind of episode than the one she directed in season one. So I like that a lot. And uh, a lot of energy, a lot of hype. I enjoyed I it a lot. Oh, I love the lore. You know, there's world building going yeah. on. There's lore. We find out ma about the Mandalorian lore, and we find out more about just the universe itself. And there, I have to say that I know one of my favorite things about these episodes is seeing the production paintings over the end credits. There's just some. There was one effect shot in here, and it's it's from a distance when something explodes, and you see. I don't want to ruin it, but it's it's it, it was just a beautiful image, and uh, of our characters, and it, I, I I just the thought that's put into this show from a Star Wars perspective. While I don't think this show is necessarily perfect, and narratively it, it does always seem to me to feel slight, but what went on in this episode, I really felt fulfilled as a Star Wars fan watching mm. this. And it, it was even the, the portrayal of our character from last week, Fro Frog Lady, I, I really found it kind of heartwarming, you know? Yeah, it when worked. She, when, she, when she's when you're reunited with her husband. And it's 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 a warm, it's, it's I mean, I you know, domestic bliss, the Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen of frog people. Now, there's, there's a lot of details <laughs> we're not going into right now. Like, yeah. there's a lot of details we're not going into right now. But no, I, I agree. It was, a, it was a fun episode, a good up. You know, it's funny, too. A lot of times you'll get these really long movies, like two and a half hours, and you watch and you go, man, that didn't feel like two and a half hours. This was oddly the reverse. This was a 30-minute episode. 30 minutes. It didn't feel like 30 minutes. Like, honestly, by the time it ended, I felt like I had just watched an hour-long episode. It's yeah. really weird. Like, it felt like an hour-long episode, but they just packed so much into that 30 minutes. No, I, I agree, man. It was chock-a-block full of just <laughs> deliciousness. I, I really just enjoyed it. And I really, I, I, I uh, you know, there's one thing they have, um, you know, because it's a port city, they've got cranes. And this is just a throwaway thing, but did you notice, like, they have... It's like an imperial walker, but it's a yes, crane attached to a crane. Yeah, I love that. I'm like, that's so cool. I want a model of that, man. All right. Question is, guys, hey, did you have a chance to see it yet? Uh, this episode of Mandalorian, the heiress. Did you have a chance to watch it? If so, what did you think? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. 